Um, firstly, massive thank you to Event Tech Live sponsors Choose to Rent and Kaltura for sponsoring the theatre today. If you haven't been any, in any sessions yet, you can follow along with the closed captions via Interpify on the screen there. For Q&A, if you'd like to ask any questions, please scan the QR code or go to the Pigeonhole app at pigeonhole.at and you can um, see the questions as they come up here. You can upvote any questions that you'd like to have answered at the end. So for this session, I'm pleased to introduce Mike Alton. Mike is speaker, author and consultant at The Social Media Hat and he's going to talk to us about how to identify and leverage influencers to amplify and legitimize your event. All right, thank you. All right, so in 1903, decades before computers and before even typewriters, the preferred method of communication was the fountain pen, the predecessor to today's ballpoint pens. The fountain pen was elegant, beautiful, and it was <laughs> prone to extreme messiness. Those who partook in the extended use of such instruments were clearly and literally marked. It wasn't that year that the Conklin Pen Company in Toledo, Ohio, decided to employ influencer marketing, though, of course, it wasn't called that back then. Influencer marketing is a relatively recent term. Throughout the 20th century, brands and businesses turned to celebrities for endorsements and to serve as spokespeople for the brands. In the very early 1900s, most celebrity endorsers were professional athletes and by mid-century movie stars who moved onto the scene. But Conklin knew better than to use just any old celebrity. They knew that if they wanted everyday folks to be interested in and want to buy their pens, they needed an influencer with whom everyday folks could relate and whom would it make sense to tie to the brand. Imagine for a moment if Conklin had turned to Major League Baseball slugger Babe Ruth as their spokesman. Other than signing fat contracts, Babe wasn't exactly known for his prolific use of the quiet quill. And therein lies our first lesson and criteria when it comes to influencer marketing brand fit. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's review some preliminary concepts. Put simply, influencer marketing is any time a brand or an event is able to leverage an individual who has an audience of their own to reach that audience. That might be to drive registrations, of course, or it might just to be to raise awareness of the event or the brand with that audience, which means it's important to note anyone with an audience can be an influencer. Influencer marketing is not limited to celebrities with millions of social media followers. An influencer with a relatively small following may actually be the best influencer for the right event. We therefore break influencers down into a number of categories based largely on the size of their audience. At the mega influencer level, we have, of course, the celebrities. Just like those early 1900s, you'll find your share of movie stars and professional athletes. You can expect to reach a huge number of people with a mega influencer across a wide swath of demographics, but you'll pay dearly for that exposure. Down at here, we find the macro influencer with about 100,000 to maybe a million followers, and you'll still find your share of celebrities at this level, but you'll also begin to find influencers who've built their influence on social media itself typically in a specific industry like travel or food, making it a little bit easier to find someone at this level that aligns with a particular brand. Down a tier, we have the micro-influencer with 1,000 to 100,000 followers. Though someone with 100,000 followers could be said to have a great deal of influence, particularly if they've stayed focused on a particular niche. Now, it's at these smaller levels that we begin to see some challenges when it comes to finding and working with influencers. Everyone knows who the mega celebrities are. And they've got experienced staff to handle campaign requests. Joe the vlogger may have never worked with a business before. So be prepared for that. And finally, at the smallest tier, we have the nano influencer with under 1,000 followers. These are typically prominent members of their own community, but they may be someone who has very little experience on social media itself. So that's something to be aware of because they, again, may actually be the best person to work with for your business or event. So, while I'd love to assume that you're all here because you've been sold on the idea of influencers and influencer marketing and you just want to go about the right way, but maybe that's not you. Maybe you've seen some of the horror stories in the news of influencers acting like divas or patting their staffs with fake followers and you think, ah, oh, Mike, that's not for me. Maybe old school sales is the way to go. Except your customers and your attendees, they're not as interested in talking to salespeople, but they do listen to influencers. And as a brand or an event that's going to take the time to implement influencer marketing in the best possible way, you can expect to reach new audiences, scale content creation, and establish more trust with that audience. And it's that trust that's going to determine whether they buy or register from you 
or from someone else. So if you want to be top of mind and tip of tongue, influencer marketing is an exceptionally effective means to that end. But do we have to have an entire program in place to leverage influencers? And I'm going to be talking about brand ambassadors. What's the difference between a brand ambassador and an influencer? Well, simply put, a brand ambassador is an influencer who goes beyond paid marketing campaigns. There's an actual relationship and a partnership in place. The kind of person Ken Blanchard called a raving fan. They're not someone that you would simply pay once to share a post. There's an ongoing level of activity there, which is why you need a formal program in place to manage that. So now we get into the meat of what we're going to talk about today. How to actually build a program for influencers and brand ambassadors that you're going to be able to leverage to, for speakers for your events as well as promoters for your events. And it should be noted that everything I'm about to share with you could be handled by a CMO or a social media manager or an event program manager. You don't necessarily need to hire a full-time influencer marketing program manager, but you are going to need to spend some time up front getting things started. First, let's make sure that everyone in your organization is on the same page when it comes to goals and expectations. There is a lot that influencers can do for us from brand awareness to registrations, but they're not miracle workers, so have those conversations up front. So, how do we actually find influencers that might be a great fit for our brand or our events? Well, just like a major league baseball player probably makes for a lousy fountain pen spokesman, so too will most influencers be a poor fit for your brand or event. You need to consider brand fit as the first criteria before proceeding with any individual influencer. So what does that mean exactly? Well, brand fit is the degree to which a particular influencer's voice, style, message, and content focus align with that of the representing brand. In other words, how alike is the brand and the influencer? Helps if you've already thought about your own brand in terms of style, voice, message, and so on. Having a highly polished style guide that considers both aesthetics, like your tone and your colors and your logo treatment and that sort of thing, but also the style, voice, culture, message, and so on, that'll make determination of brand fit easier. The second criteria you need to consider is the category of influencer, their size, i.e. mega influencer, and your available budget. Once you have those categories in mind, those criteria, it's time to start looking for influencers. And you've got a lot of options available. The first thing you want to think about is who's already talking about your brand or your event. That might be customers, past attendees, bloggers, or other internet personalities. And the benefit here is many. First of all, they're already fans of your event or your brand. They probably have content already that you can amplify. And they've got an existing track record that you can evaluate. And while these will likely be micro or even nano influencers, that also means they'll be more affordable. The next thing to think about is the biggest names in your industry. These are about people who are speaking at industry events and talking about your industry in their content. And the benefit here is these people are already top of mind. You're already following them on LinkedIn or Instagram. You're not going to have to do a whole lot of research to identify these people. But that does imply a third approach and one that you're going to have to take regardless, and that is research. Researching influencers will take time, but it will also be extremely rewarding. I guarantee you will find influencers through your research that you had never previously heard of, and yet will make for the most amazing ambassadors for you tomorrow. So how do we find them? I recommend starting with a tool called BuzzSumo. You can use Google, you can use the social networks themselves. I like BuzzSumo because it will search the web, it will search specific social networks by the, whatever criteria you put in, and then you can filter and sort by language, geography, time frame, and so on. When you see a particular influencer's content that looks interesting to you, drill down and see, would it have made sense to include your brand or your event or your services in that particular piece of content? If so, great. That's an influencer that you're going to want to follow up with. But let's keep thinking about how we're going to find these particular influencers because you could also be looking at other events in your industry. Like if I'm an event professional, I'm going to look at Event Tech Live and all the speakers that Event Tech Live has here. These are potential influencers for me if I'm in the same industry. You can be noting these down in a Google Sheet, but I recommend Nimble. It's a CRM, and if you put an influencer into, into Nimble, Nimble will scour the web and find all of their websites, their social profiles, their contact information, and more. Buzzsumo will give you their X, a, a Twitter profile, which you can then click on, and using Nimble's Chrome extension, import that influencer into Nimble, tag them as an influencer, and return to your research. 
There's a third approach that you're going to want to take with your research, and that is to pay attention to the conversations that are happening online. And for that, you need a third tool, Agora Pulse. It's a social media management dashboard, so of course you can publish content to all the social networks and monitor that content for engagement and results. But you can also set up powerful searches around specific influencers, specific hashtags, and again, you can filter and sort those results by location and more. It's worth noting at this point that influencer marketing it's all about relationships. You're gonna hear me use that word over and over again because while it's technically possible to fill out a form and pay an influencer to share a post, that's not effective. Truly effective influencer marketing happens when there's a relationship there. The influencer genuinely likes and wants to work with you and you genuinely like and wanna support that influencer, but the thing is relationships take time. I don't want to suggest there are no shortcuts to building a great relationship because I'm about to share a bunch with you, but none of it matters unless you're able to build rapport with each individual influencer one at a time. I'm stressing this now because you might research and find a couple of influencers and want to rush into the courtship phase rather than going back and looking for more. But as the adage says, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Take the time now to build a list of influencers and start sparking relationships with all of them. Some will be open to it and some won't. Some will be really excited to work with you. Others will take even more time, but the problem with any relationship is that you do not know in advance how it's going to go. These are essentially blind dates. Someone you reach out to today is going to be the most amazing ambassador for you tomorrow, but trust me on this, you won't know who at first. So take the time to put a list of 25 to 50 potential influencers if you can, and then begin working on all those relationships. Did I mention relationships take time? I did? Cool. But the thing is, if you take the time now, those relationships would become positive and beneficial in a shorter amount of time. So where do we start? First thing you want to do is pay attention to the social profiles that those influencers are most active and engaged and connect with them there. Now do note there's a difference between connect and follow. If it's a social network where a connection is required, that influencer has to approve or accept your connection. And if they don't know you, they're not going to be inclined to connect you, with you. It's going to be far easier to follow them, if possible, on their preferred social network. The next thing, once you've actually followed or connected with all of those influencers, is to begin to engage with those posts. Now, I'm not going to tell you exactly what to say on any particular post, but let me give you some guidelines. First, you may engage with one post per day on average per influencer. Number two, shares are the most meaningful form of engagement. You're saying, I trust you and your content enough to show it to my audience. Comments are where you have opportunities to share similar thought and to create dialogue and conversation. This is where you develop rapport. Now you may like, comment on, and share one post for an influencer, but be wary of doing all those things too often or of liking every single thing that they publish. Some influencers might look at you as a raving fan, others might just think you're raving. So instead, spend about 30 minutes a day engaging with your target influencers in as natural and authentic way as possible. This is where tools like LinkedIn Sales Navigator and also Nimble will be very helpful as they'll help surface for you the most recent posts from your target influencers. Now. As you're engaging personally with those influencers, you are building rapport with each one of them, but you're also observing the third criteria you need to pay attention to, audience engagement. It is quite possible for an influencer today to have a huge social media following and yet exert very little actual influence. Those influencers may have been purchased or they may have been engaged at one point in the past, but now due to a variety of reasons, they're just not listening. As you're personally paying attention and you're engaging with those posts, you can pay attention to things like, are you the only one commenting? Is it the same people commenting each and every time? Or is it a nice variety of audience members engaging with each individual post and leaving comments? And in turn, how is the influencer responding? <laughs> are they ignoring you and everyone else? Or are they taking the time to respond to each and every comment and build audience engagement? What's the tone and the style of those comments? If the influencer was replying to a comment as you or your brand, how comfortable would you be? If you pay attention to their responses, you'll come to understand their perspectives when it comes to business and just life in general, things that are important to both you and your own target audience. You'll come to understand their worldview and that will help you relate with them. 
Now, once you've engaged with that influencer and they've started to engage positively with you in response, the time will come to take that relationship to the next level, collaboration. At Agora Pulse, where I run our influencer marketing program, my approach is to simply gift social media influencers free access to the tool and see if they like using it. I can tell if they've logged in and I can see if they're talking about our brand online. And if they are, I can deepen that relationship by amplifying their content, sending them swag and inviting them to participate in co-marketing activities like webinars and roundups where everyone benefits. If that's an option for you, that's an excellent way to proceed. Now let me kind of pull back the curtain a little bit because at Agora Pulse, I'm also putting on massive virtual summits every single quarter. Thousands of attendees to my summits and those attendees turn into hundreds of paid clients for Agora Pulse. And because I have a successful ambassador program with target influencers, when I want to run a virtual summit, I have no shortage of influencers that raise their hands and say, yes, Mike, I will speak for you, often for free. My next event is in three and a half weeks. I've got nearly 30 speakers, all prominent influencers in the space. I'm not paying any of them. When I do things like that, I am of course creating content for my events that's expert led and that lends authority to my event and my brand. And of course creates content that I'm gonna be able to repurpose in a number of ways. And of course those influencers are promoting my event and my brand to their audiences when they share the fact that, hey, I'm speaking at Mike Alton's event. And one of the really subtle points about using prominent influencers with events is that I'm actually setting up my next event for success. In Q1, when I talk to a prospective speaker or a brand partner that I want to bring along, and I tell them, hey, at my last event, I had best-selling author Jonah Berger or Guy Kawasaki at my event. Now, you may not know those names, but in the marketing industry where I work, those are big-time names. That lends clout and authority to me and my brand and makes it so much easier for me to get the next set of speakers or partners for my event. So that's why you want to do that. Now, when it comes to compensation, brands and events have a lot of options. Now, of course, a mega influencer is going to require a contract and a fat payout. Everyone else is going to be a lot more affordable, starting with free, like I mentioned. Many influencers will be happy to work with you in exchange for free products or services or access or co-marketing collaboration. Now, when you're working with them, you have a lot of options and you just want to make sure that you're balancing your expectations with what you're prepared to offer in exchange. Now your options include free product or services, event access, upgraded access, behind the scenes access to point people, corporate swag and gifts, affiliate payments, increased affiliate payments, ongoing payments, and one-time payments. And whatever you set up to do, just make sure that you're measuring the performance of your campaigns, either after the event or on a monthly and a quarterly basis. Don't just assume it's working. And it's helpful to have those conversations with the individual influencers themselves. Is there anything else that you can do to help them be a more vocal advocate for you and your brand or your events? And remember the truth about influencer marketing, which is that it really boils down to brand awareness. And that cannot be simply measured. But that brings us to the final topic today, success. How are we measuring the success of our influencer marketing programs? Well, think back. We talked about the Conklin Pen Company. Who do you think they might have gone with in 1903? Someone to espouse the use of their fountain pens? None other than Mark Twain. Twain was the author of The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, Life on the Mississippi, and a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. He was known throughout the country as someone who penned his thoughts regularly. Clearly, he could be seen using and enjoying something like a fountain pen. And so he was paid to endorse the Conklin Crescent Pen. And he was quoted as saying, I prefer it to 10 other fountain pens because it carries its filler in its own stomach and I cannot mislay it even by art or intention. Also, I prefer it because it is a profanity saver. It cannot roll off the desk. Doubtless, his endorsement led to countless more sales and revenue, but it also led to assets that Conklin was able to repurpose for over a century. To this day, you can buy a Conklin Crescent pen with Mark Twain's signature and endorsement. So clearly, that was a success for Conklin, no matter the cost. But what about you? How do you determine the success of your influencer marketing? Well, due to the density of ice, it's not uncommon for large slabs of ice to just float through the ocean with nothing but the tip visible above the water. And yet the rest of the iceberg is huge. Measuring influencer marketing is exactly the same. There are some things we can measure, clicks, reach, registrations and sales. What we cannot measure is how many people decided to register for our event days or maybe weeks later after hearing about it from an influencer. 
We also cannot measure how perceptions change, hopefully positively, as a result of the association with that human influencer. Simply put, this is brand awareness. The more people know about and talk about your brand or your event, the more people will sign up. But when executed well, you will see an impact on your most important metric of all, your bottom line. Thank you. I believe we have some time for questions. And I see a couple on pigeonhole. So I'll hit to those first. If you guys want to think about any questions you have, any advice on building fee structures for B2B influencers? What? Oh, okay. Yo, that's a good idea. So if one of you has a question, I'll hear you. So a fee structure for B2B influencers. There's a couple of different ways you can do that. I prefer working with up and coming influencers who are looking for speaking opportunities at events because quite frankly, they're going to be happy to do it for the exposure, maybe some free corporate swag or free access to my tool, that sort of thing. But if you need to hire like a keynote speaker or something like that, they're probably already going to have their own payment system. Now, if you're talking about influencers for your brand, regardless of whether or not that's for an event, that's a little different. What you're going to want to look at is a structure where you're paying them for campaigns and you're also incentivizing them, doing both. You can't really just rely on an affiliate program where you're paying them on commissions only because that's not fair. That doesn't recognize, like I already said, the whole value of everything that they're doing. That's only going to recognize the leads that they send you who actually convert into a sale, which isn't their responsibility in the beginning, right? You've got a sales team to convert those kinds of things. So I would do both. The second question was, how do you maintain authenticity with influencers who are a great brand fit but not as active, regular on social media? Great question. I do in-person events. Every single month this year, I have held a dinner in a different city around the world. I've got one here in London in a couple of weeks. And when I have these dinners, that's an opportunity for me to invite local influencers to actually get together. I usually tie it to a conference that's my, in my industry. Again, I'm from the marketing world, so I'll look for a marketing industry conference where they're probably gonna be there anyways, maybe people coming in from out of town. But those in-person engagements, maybe it's not a dinner for you, maybe it's a breakfast or just a beat up or coffee. Anything you can do to have that FaceTime. If you're not in a position to do that, get on a video call. That's the next best thing to in-person, as we all know. But that's gonna allow you to see them and talk to them in a very natural way and get their feedback on why aren't they active on social media? Is there something else that you can do for them? I mean, maybe they are active, but not necessarily talking about your brand a lot. Maybe that's because they have questions or problems that you can help them to work through. So, any other questions? Okay, thank you. No more questions. I think we've got we've got a couple of minutes. Can I ask one question? Uh, yes. Is, is anybody here using influencers when they think about their event strategy at the event level? A little bit. So you mentioned, obviously, marketing influencers is not a new concept, but you mentioned brand and you mentioned event. Yeah. Do you think it's effective to think of an influencer or use them just as an event in isolation, or is it much more effective to think of it as a brand? impact at a brand level rather than just that individual event? It's a great question, and I do both. A lot of it's going to depend on your brand and how aligned the event is with your brand. Like at Agora Pulse, like I said, I'm doing virtual summits every single quarter. Not every summit is 100% aligned with the brand. Like the last quarter, my virtual summit was the Introverted Seller Summit. A whole event just for introverts who are also in the sales business. It was kind of a tangential play for Agora Pulse, because we're in the social media marketing space, right? So sellers are not really our target audience, but they kind of are, they kind of use social media. So for that, for me to spend the time to get sales influencers on board as long-term brand influencers for me, eh, that didn't really make a whole lot of sense. So for that particular event, I was building relationships and gearing up relationships with influencers specifically for that event. But for a lot of my other events, they're either targeting to a very specific social platform, like we did a TikTok summit, my summit in three months or three weeks is all about Pinterest. It's all about Pinterest for agencies. So I've got specific Pinterest influencers, some of the best Pinterest coaches and some of the best marketing agency coaches in the world, they're speaking at my event because my target audience will recognize those names. And that's important because some of our marketing is coming on our normal channels, email, social media, and that sort of thing. But a lot of our marketing is paid media, social media ads, sponsored newsletters, and that sort of thing, which means that may be the first time somebody's seeing the brand Agora Pulse or Mike Alton or the event name, which means it's not going to mean anything to them. 
Right, but if I show them that someone from Pinterest is keynoting my event, or these agency coaches or these Pinterest coaches are speaking at the event, those are names that they're probably going to recognize, and again, that's going to lend authority and relevancy to my event. Okay, great. Anybody else before we finish? Okay, thank you, Mike. Really interesting. Thanks very much. Thank you.